All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, guys, what we're going to talk about how um, you can implement the rendering system for your game engine. So, yeah, let's talk about that. Let's let's roll this. All right, guys, so um, you probably are eager to start developing your rendering system in your game engine and you may not know how to start. Um, so in this video, what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I basically uh, implemented uh, the rendering system uh, in my game engine. All right, guys. So let's talk about the rendering pipeline first. I'm going to give you a brief summary. Um, I'm not going to go into details uh, because I want to focus more on the architecture for your rendering system more than how the rendering pipeline works. All right. So. Um, I'm sure you have seen this in your computer graphic books uh, by now, uh, but basically the rendering pipeline um, tells the GPU how to render a particular character. Um, that's basically what it does. Uh, and the rendering pipeline consists of several stages, right? Um, some of the stages are the shaders and then the rasterizer uh, and also um, some testing that, uh, you know, that is performed by the pipeline. Um, and obviously, um, you need to pass some data to the pipeline, and that data represents the attributes of the character. For example, the vertices, uh, the normal vectors, texture data, etc. And all of this data is basically passed um, to the rendering pipeline, and the data goes through again to all of these stages, the shaders and the testing that needs to be done. And then in the end, all of that data gets rendered on a default frame buffer, which is basically uh, your screen, all right? Now, the action of the data going through the pipeline and ending on the frame buffer is called a render pass. All right, so now that you understand the pipeline, what, you know, what can you do with it? Well, understanding how the pipeline works will actually allow you to develop your rendering system. And I'm going to give you some tips for you to keep in mind. All right. So one of the things that you need to know is that um, entities of the same type, for example, entities that are uh, 3D characters, can actually share the same pipeline. Um, you do not have to create uh, uh, one pipeline per uh, entity. You don't have to do that. All right. As long as all of the entities have you know, are of the same type, you can actually sh uh, share the same pipeline. And here I have um, this graph where it shows um, two pipelines, one that deals with 3D models and one that deals with uh, 2D models. And these pipelines basically, again, they tell the GPU how to render those type of entities. And here entity zero and entity one are obviously 3D entities which pass the data to the pipeline and then the pipeline basically renders that data onto the default frame buffer which is your screen. Again here um, I have my 2D my pipeline and entity 2 and entity 3 basically are 2D entities images uh, and they end up basically on you know render on the frame buffer right so in a particular uh, render sequence rendering sequence you can have you know multiple entities going through the particular pipeline and then being rendered to the frame buffer. This basically um, details, for example, a game where you have a bunch of 3D characters and you have, um, you know, some images like, a, you know, like an uh, UI um, in the game. All right, so this is how entities and pipeline works. Now, let's talk about multiple passes. Um, Remember when I told you that uh, the action of the data going through the pipeline and ending on the default frame buffer is called a render pass? Well, um, the default frame buffer is not the only texture where you can uh, render data to. You can actually uh, render uh, the data to different textures uh, and they are called uh, off-screen textures, right? And this is really cool because now we can create several different effects by uh, creating a multi-pass sequence, right? So for example, I have uh, you know, my data from my character going to this particular pipeline, and now I'm rendering that data onto an off-screen texture. Then what I can do is I can use the data in this texture and use it in my second pass um, and create particular effect that I want. And this is how you actually uh, create shadows uh, in a game. We use a multi-pass uh, sequence where we 
first of all, render the data to an off-screen texture, and then you start data at that texture in the second pass, and you start information to create the, uh, you know, the illusion of shadows, and that's how you do it. So here, um, you know, I have the first pass, and then we have the second pass. Now, why am I showing you this? Well, I'm showing you this because um, entities can actually link to different pipelines, all right? Um, entities can not only share the same pipeline, but you can actually link one particular entity to a different pipeline depending on the rendering path that you are currently um, working on. And let me give you an example. Here, I have multiple pipelines and passes, right? I have the first pass, second pass, and the final pass. Now, I want you to look uh, at Entity Zero and how uh, it um, links to different pipelines depending on the path that you are um, working on, right? So for example, Entity Zero uh, during path one is linked to pipeline zero and the data is being rendered to texture zero, for example. Then on the second pass, I switch the pipeline that I want to use for my Entity Zero. I'm now using pipeline one. And then on the final pass, again, I switch to a different pipeline. Um, and by doing this, you can actually create uh, different effects for a particular entity, right? So I want you to keep this in mind. We have the data from the character, uh, we have the pipeline, and we have the passes, right? And we can use all of this um, knowledge, right, to actually um, develop a rendering system, all right? So before I show you how I did my system, I just want to highlight some points that I want you to keep in mind, all right? So point number one, uh, multiple entities can use the same pipeline, all right? As long as the entities are of the same type, you can um, link those entities to use the same pipeline. Uh, point number two, an entity can link to different pipelines. You can actually switch to which pipe in the pipeline you want to um, use at a particular stage. You are not tied to one pipeline. And point three, um, which is tied to point two, um, during different passes, you can use different pipelines. Again, here entity zero is tied to pipeline zero. During the second pass, I switch the pipeline and during my final pass, I switch the pipeline again. Um, this information will basically help you um, design the rendering uh, engine for your game engine, okay? Now, obviously, there's more to, to, to that, but, you know, if you were to see my game engine from, like, 20,000 feet above the ground, uh, you will see that I, you know, make use of these points, all right? So I'm going to actually um, show you some code, uh, some pseudocode, um, so that you can see how I develop it. Uh, let's talk about, first of all, about the class that represents the 3D model in my game engine. So that class is actually declared as a U4D model. This basically um, represents a 3D character, right? Now, that class um, has um, uh, this member called U4D re uh, Render Entity, uh, which holds all of the data for my character, all of the rendering data for my character. And that data is the data that is going to be uh, passed to the pipeline, right? So this data is basically, um, you know, basically represented by you for the render entity. It has attributes, uniforms, textures, etc. Okay. Um, next, I have one particular class, which is called the um, U4D render pipeline. Um, and this uh, class represents my rendering pipeline, all right? This class is in charge of initializing all of the stages in my pipeline, uh, initializing the uh, shaders, uh, setting the attributes layouts, uh, setting any blending that I want to do, um, any testing, um, etc. cetera, all right? So this class represents my rendering pipeline. Then um, I also have this other class, which basically um, is in charge of everything related to rendering, right? And that class is called the Render Manager, U4D Render Manager. Again, it manages all of the rendering that's going on in my game engine. This manager has um, a vector container, which holds all of the pipelines that I currently have in my game engine or that you may want to add um, in a video game, 
Um, so for example, here um, in this code snippet, I'm actually showing you how I created different uh, pipelines, right? I have a pipeline for shadows, uh, another pipeline to do like the normal, um, you know, final pass pipeline, pipeline um, and then an off-screen pipeline. Um, so again, all of these pipelines will be used depending on the path that I'm currently working on. All right, so now, you may be asking yourself, okay, so I have my entities, right? I have my pipelines and I have, I'm gonna have some rendering passes, right? How do I link the pipeline to a particular pass? Well, um, that you for the render entity, which is the class that holds the, my rendering data for my, for my 3D model, um, also has this map, right? Um, which basically allows me to set or to link the pipeline that I want it to be uh, associated with a particular path, all right? So for example, um, in this uh, code snippet, I actually make the connection. I tell the engine, well, during the final pass, I want you to use the model pipeline. During the shadow pass, I want you to use the shadow pipeline. And during the cool effect pass, I want to use this particular pipeline. I'm basically, um, you know, doing what is shown here in this, uh, you know, in this illustration. I'm just mapping a pipeline to a particular pass, right? And why do I do this? Well, because when I'm actually doing the whole rendering, um, the rendering manager, the render manager here, um, will use that information to activate the correct pipeline, all right? So for example, here, um, during my render function, I have two passes. The first pass, I have a shadow pass, and the second pass is the final pass, right? So in this while loop, I basically go uh, through all of the entities in my game. And for each um, entity, I basically get the pipeline for the pass. Remember I used the mapping? Well, this is where I make use of that. Um, so for example here, um, I want to get a pipeline for pass shadow pass. So I'm gonna get a particular pipeline. Um, and I use that pipeline um, and pass it to my entity and my entity will basically send all of the information to that particular pipeline. And then I go to the next entity and do the same thing. Now, um, I retrieve all of that pipeline, um, you know, using my render manager. Because remember, my render manager actually holds uh, all of the pipelines pipelines that I currently have in my game engine or that you can add in your game. Um, and once I have, you know, I'm done with the first pass, I go to the second pass and again, I go through all of the entities and I get the pipeline for um, the final pass in this case. Um, and basically what I'm doing is this, right? For entity zero, um, I get the, the particular pipeline, which is pipeline zero. I send that to a particular texture um, and then the second pass, again, I get the pipeline, etc. So I'm showing you this so that you can have a, a good idea on, on how to develop uh, your uh, rendering engine. The whole idea is to understand how the rendering pipeline works, um, how you can use that in a render pass and how you can, uh, you know, basically send your data to the rendering pipeline. Um, if you understand all of those points, uh, you'll be able to basically develop a rendering uh, engine. Um, so um, I hope, you know, this video, you know, has helped you. Um, if it has, well, please click the like button. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, because I'm gonna be doing more videos like this and hopefully uh, help you develop your own game engine. Um, and also let me know, right, um, how will you develop your own rendering engine? Um, I think, you know, for me, um, this works. Um, I'm able to basically, um, you know, on the fly create a pipeline and then link it to a particular path and, you know, send the data from my entity to that pipeline and, and get everything moving. Um, it has worked for me, um, I like it. Um, so, you know, but this may not work for you. You may have a better idea than what I'm showing you here. but. Nonetheless, I hope that um, how I develop my game engine has given you some ideas on how to improve it or, or how to take it, you know, and make it a lot better, right? All right, guys, so um, I hope you, 
you know you like this video again uh do not forget again to join my uh, discord server we have several game engine developers that are very very knowledgeable they know more about game engines than i do believe me um and also subscribe to my youtube channel i'm gonna be doing more videos like this and also let me know if you like this type of format um if you you know if if you have any suggestions also let me know um you know uh, I want to improve how I teach, um, how I share what I know when it comes to game engine development. All right, guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.